or should, should I say the next generation of out of cautioners? Perchance? Yes. Oh my god! Wow! We're so excited to be here! Uh, hello, welcome to the pilot episode, the first ever of Out of Caution, The Next Generation. We are your hosts. My name is uh, Kate Ziblick. You can call me, I'm a, I am but a clown in heart and soul. Uh, and my pronouns are she, her, and I'm so excited to be here. And I'm Harriet Veltkamp. I also use she, her pronouns, and I am also so excited for tonight. Um, we have an amazing lineup of artists and some fun hosting things. Um, and we're just so excited for you all to be here and follow us into the future of Out of Caution. Speaking of following us into things, uh, you know, I actually got really distracted like a couple of minutes before we went live because I noticed there were some tweets active from our account at Out of Caution on Twitter. Ooh. And also you can follow us at Out of Caution on Instagram. And we also have a Facebook page just for you peoples because uh, we have some beautiful people on our team working our stuff. Harriet is doing our Instagram. Uh, but we have a beautiful human being named Caroline who is doing our Twitter. And, uh, you know, she couldn't be here. The core members of our team right now are, you know, Harriet and I, and then Ben, who is doing our tech, our lovely tech wizard, and Caroline. And I thought a really good way to introduce Caroline um, was I think like the core of her soul, the breadth of her soul, we met freshman year at the new school and have been best friends and in love ever since. And now, and I think the best way to represent her is, uh, I think the best way to, to represent her is through, so I don't know if you guys know what this is, but there's a thing called, um, there's an app called Poop Map where you can like, where you can like, so like draw, or, like you can like schedule where you poop. Um, uh, or like you can like show like on a map where you pooped in various locations and you can like add your friends and like chat about your poops. Uh, and Caroline gave me permission to read uh, a couple, a couple quotes that she made, a couple posts from Poop Map about describing her, her poopies. So if you are, so you know, just trigger warning for talk of fecal matter. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, she said, well, I believe she said, I always mix up what your username is. Uh, I believe, <laughs> Caroline, it is a, she said, Duncan Poop at one point. Uh, and then my butthole was bleeding. I hope it's not bleeding anymore, honey. Mm. I hope you're okay. We should make an, an OOC TNG poop map. I think that'd be really fun. I think we should make an account for poop map. <laughs> um, there was one where she said, clearing the system for my day. Uh, and rated that poop five star. Oh, no, that was Carolyn's girlfriend. I lied. Uh, that was five stars. Still great. Still beautiful. Um, <laughs> ooh, poop during class with, like, the heart, with, like, the emoji where it's, like, blushing and smiling. Where it's, like, uh released a toxic bomb while my professor was talking about the transnational racism in Brazil. Rated five stars. <laughs> nice. I think, wait, was I reading Catherine's instead of yours, Caroline? Oh no, oops. Uh, oh, I was reading your, I read a couple of yours. I, I read one of your girl, your beautiful, lovely girlfriends. Uh, at some anyway <laughs> um, we will, that is uh, an introduction to the team. And also, potentially, we're going to make a poop map account for Out of Caution, the next gen. So if you guys, if there's a leaderboard. Like, you can compete to see who is, you know, the, the higher you are, the more you <laughs> poop. So the healthier your bowels are, I suppose. So uh, we'll get back to you on that. But right now, we should probably start the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I am actually currently in Hawaii as of a week. Um, and I'm zooming in from my tent. I don't know if you can see around me. Um, the, the, the like fairy lights that we have in the background, yeah. totally, that was coincidental. We did not mean to match. I'm glad we do. We're, we're twinsies, you know? Yes. Um, but anyways, I there's a bunch of fruit everywhere and it's amazing. And so I have a little uh, pop quiz for everyone. I have collected some fruit from around the farm and we're going to have Kate guess. And if Kate doesn't know what the fruit is, we need everyone in the chat to to put in some guesses. Um, yes. So I have a couple to start with. Um, the first two are like fairly normal. So hopefully you'll get them. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I don't know many, too, lots of things. So I will probably. I'm learning, I'm learning as well. Um, I had something yesterday called like a mountain apple. It was crazy. It was like this pink and like crunchy and kind of tasted like rose. It was very Whoa. strange, but it was really good. Anyway, here's our first fruit. 
Wait. This way. <laughs> Kate, what do you think it is? Oh. oh, God, I feel... It grows on a tree. Is it a coconut before it turns brown? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Awesome. I know. Okay, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and then the second one looks a little stranger than it normally does. Also grows on a tree. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a, that's not a, it's not a, uh, <laughs> who, it, in the I, chat, chat, who, yeah, what do we think I'm saying people, other, <laughs> there's a slight delay, so I don't know if people are I saying this is a coconut. Yeah, I, um, think, I think that was for the last one, okay. but we'll, we can wait a second. Ooh, a pear, potentially? It's not a pear. It looks a little bit like a pear. It what? is not a mango. It is something you can buy in grocery stores orange? other than Hawaii. Orange? Like the close. Coast. Super close. Lemon? Almost there. Almost. Tangerine? No. It's Lemon? like a pink color inside. Grapefruit? Yes. Hot oh, turns sick. right into it. <laughs> I will later. <laughs> Grapefruit. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so I'm going to introduce, yeah, you're welcome. Um, I'm going to introduce our first act, which we are super excited to host. Um, her name is Victoria Duncan, and she's presenting a piece called The World Today. Um, and she says, I was on my way to work on Friday, March 13th, 2020, only to find a completely empty train that was normally packed with commuters. Most people's jobs had already ordered um, that they work from home. Having recently come back from a trip to Asia, I was one of a few, only a few people who was wearing masks and I received lots of stares. This was my last day commuting to work and the last day I had stepped foot in that office since I was later laid off. I felt so much panic and confusion that day that I even bleached my coat by accident in an attempt to sanitize it. I knew something big was about to happen. When I got home that day, I made this film using audio clips from the media saying a million different things at once to evoke the strangeness and uncertainty of that time. Um, and Victoria Duncan is a filmmaker based in NYC. Um, sorry. Yeah. And she graduated from NYU Tisch School of the Arts um, and has since worked in post-production management for scripted and documentary series um, for a bunch of different uh, companies, including Netflix and Vice and CBS. Um, and here is her piece. We're still waiting to find out whether a New York City resident has the Wuhan coronavirus. I'm officially declaring a national emergency. Two very big words. Of COVID-19, which include cough, fever, and shortness of breath. Should I be scared? Are uh, people overreacting? What's true? What's not true? And it's actually very common. It's totally normal to feel that way. Is reduce the density of people. In furtherance of the order, I'm urging every state to set up emergency operation centers effective immediately. So 50% of your seated If you consider that 80% of people who have the new coronavirus uh, have only mild symptoms, there's a lot of people walking around out there who have it and uh, don't know they have it, may never know they have it, and, and they're spreading it. The positive cases here in New York City went up to 154 today. of times, it's very hard to navigate the U.S. healthcare system, but right now, it's just almost impossible for somebody who hasn't been to Wuhan, China, and isn't, you know, just on death's doorstep to get a test in a lot of cities. Drive-through tests available in the critical locations identified by public health professionals. Jimmy Kimmel's looking out for us. He came up with a new way so we don't spread the coronavirus. It's called the ELBA. But we don't want people to take a test if if we feel that they shouldn't Markets be doing it. Markets just opened now down at 1,600, 1,642 1, points. Well, the testing. The U.S. has been lagging far behind many other nations, including South Korea. Donald Trump very clearly not taking responsibility and going further to say it's not his fault. Well, the biggest takeaway was that we're only testing a very small number of people. 
people. The mayor says if you need to talk to a counselor, you can do that by calling 1-888-NYC well. Wow. <laughs> we thought it would be appropriate to start off with a piece that was about COVID, uh, just because this whole show, if people don't know the history of Out of Caution and the Next Generation, which was formerly known as Out of an Abundance of Caution, uh, is we started, we being Teresa Buchheister, Lauren Miller, mm -hmm. and uh, Jessica Alsme, uh, started the show to do performance art and theater and art uh, and to continue being able to do that in the pandemic. And we're still in a pandemic and we mm -hmm. still wanted to carve out a place for art and for theater and for live performance because it's very necessary. Uh, and that piece just like throws, it throws me back so much to that like first couple of weeks when we really didn't know what was going on. Um, and I think like similar to what Kate was saying, this project started out as three weeks. Like we have a document that says the next three weeks um, and it just kept going. Um, and so just like feeling, kind of remembering that time of, of uncertainty and like, oh my goodness, what's happening? And then coming through the year and starting to get vaccines and all that crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Victoria. <laughs> yeah, Victoria, this is so cool. That was really amazing and so well done. Like I also like like somebody said that like they were like vortex back in yeah. time. I definitely felt that. Please totally. follow Victoria, <laughs> uh, like on all the socials at Victoria Duncan Films. Please do that. Incredible work. I'm screaming. Um, <laughs> our next performer we have is actually a live act, which is really fun and really exciting, and who will join us in a moment. We have uh, Aru Hanger, who, uh, you know, you can go to his website at aruhanger.com. Um, you know, uh, and he is, uh, you know, the artist statement he submitted for this is this is a participatory performance art score so you can if you are able to or feel comfortable uh get ready to move and we're apparently it's not too much physical activity uh harriet and i will stay live here and be doing it with you so if you want to follow along mm -hmm. with us at home um and aru uh hanger uh said that describes himself as saying, my art stems out of the library rather, rather than the studio. An artist should be like a librarian, collecting tools and concepts and giving people a chance to reflect with them. I did not go to art school. Instead, I created my own path in liberal art studies at the new school. I also go to the new school. We have like two other people here from the new school. Um, so if I could get a hashtag nerdy Lang. Yeah, there we go. Lang is the, is the liberal arts college at the new school and hashtag nerdy Lang is our official uh, thing that they use. So can I please get some hashtag nerdy Langs in the chat mm -hmm. as well? Thank you very much. Yes, we love, we, it's a yes, thank you. Um, uh, and then Aru turned, uh, says, I turned my classes on art theory, philosophy, sociology, modernity, nationalism, and humanism into the basis for my creativity. Performance art becomes the field of study of those theories in action. The question I am left with over and over as a teacher, artist, and organizer is, how can, I, how can confusion create space for a new trust to form amongst loved ones and strangers? The tools I use to reflect upon this question with the audience are endurance, impossible tasks, reliance on strangers, overlaying of speakers, recorded speech, interrogations, uh, splitting the audience's attention, and guided imagination. This has led to the following themes developing in my art. Dignity, uncertainty, theft, displacement, institutional decay, secularization of religious iconography, and belonging. The purpose of reflection is often unclear. Art can feel meaningless, like searching through a vacant library of books written in an abstract language, until a stranger or friend realizes that you're both working on the same translation. These are the moments I create art for. Aru, come on in. Please welcome him to the chat. Hi, can people see me? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, you're here. Yeah. Sweet. Um, thank you. Yeah, cool. I'm really excited for the show. And um, yeah, um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, this uh, so the first part of this score is I just need people to find a bed or doorway and to sit in it if you can and if you're able to. Um, and once we all get oriented there, um, we can start the next part of the score. Okay. We're sitting on bed. Yeah, so I'm sitting on my childhood bed. <laughs> um, 
Okay. So for the next part of the score, um, just go ahead and start feeling the back of your head, the back of your skull. And just um, take a moment to relax and um, really trace the whole outline of the back of your skull. So allow yourself to just feel through your hair. You know, like, is it greasy? Does it feel clean? Does it part easily? How does your skin feel under it? How often do you feel yourself holding this gesture? And what does it feel like to prolong that gesture of holding the back of your head? So from here, you can just keep your hands on the back of your head if you're able to. And we're going to go ahead and start the next part of the score. So I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine the inside of your mouth. What do you think it would look like? Now imagine what it would feel like to have bruises in the back of your mouth. And going down your throat. What would it feel like to have a bruised tongue? What would it look like? All right. Now I want you to take a moment and I want you to think about a title in your life that you no longer hold. Maybe it's an old job. Maybe it's a title to a certain person through a relationship. Maybe it's related to a hobby. And let's just all go ahead and take a moment to think of what that title is, what that role you used to play was, a role that's over now. So I hope you found one because <laughs> we're going to keep moving. But um, normally I would ask people like in the room, <laughs> like when they're ready, but I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> um, okay. I want to tell you about something broken. And this is just a hypothetical. It doesn't exist. But it's about a smoker. And at night, he takes a drag of a cigarette and he thinks, I won't smoke in the morning. And in the morning, he takes his first smoke of the day. And he begins feeling stressed throughout the day, you know. He's going to work and he doesn't feel like he has enough time to get, you know, like all of the dishes ready before they go out on the line. He feels like his boss is just a little too hard on him. When he goes home, he doesn't feel like he's really there with his girlfriend, you know. He doesn't feel close to his friends anymore. And, and throughout the day, he goes from smoking a couple of cigarettes to smoking several cigarettes once he starts drinking in the evening. And then at night, there's this moment of hope where he thinks, okay, so this is my last cigarette of the night. And in the morning, 
I'm not going to smoke and I'm going to break the pattern. Sometimes it happens. And I think the thing broken here, though, isn't his will. Because you see, the reason he takes the first cigarette in the morning is because all throughout the night, when he's supposed to be relaxed, when his body is going through, you know, like sleep and stasis, he's plagued by nightmares and fear. And he still feels stressed. So to end this score, so we can put our hands down, I need someone, which is going to have to be one of the hosts, to choose a song that they feel like has meaning to them and to go ahead and sing for us. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks. That was really wonderful. Do you know anything about uh, the Feldenkrais method or the Feldenkrais technique? No, I don't. It's a really cool thing. I think you would really enjoy like looking into that it's like a it's a physical movement practice similar to yoga or alexander but the yeah. thing that you did when you like feel the whole back of your head that's like very like big in feldenkrais the whole point is like mm -hmm. move with the smallest possible movement um that you can possibly make and it's all about doing things as with as little effort as possible and as comfortable as possible it has a really cool history the guy who founded it moisha feldenkrais like was like a really cool like scientist person and he was one of the first like black belts in the west and like learned from like yeah. japanese judo masters um yeah and it's a technique that you can learn about and like yeah and it like does all the things of like lie on the ground and like feel your like the vertebrae in your big toe and then your next toe and then you're in like yeah and it seems like you were adding a lot of really cool other elements to it that i'm really interested in but that was really like insane. It reminded me of Feldenkrais. Yeah. I'm really passionate about. So thank you for that. That was a really cool like um, like movement practice and like meditation -y thing that you just led us through. Thank you for that. That was so cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. How do you come like come up with with those sequences? I'm I'm curious about like what your process is. Oh well, I make conceptual art. So this piece to me is about agency. So I thought about like different ways that we use like the head um and like so like the back of the head you know um it has to do with you know like what if we don't hold and then of course you know like imagination spoken word singing uh all these different ways that we like emote or like stop ourselves from emoting um, mm -hmm. that's yeah. incredible i love it <laughs> That's really cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, we were thank so you. excited to have you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so happy that I could do this. Yeah, we're so yeah. glad we could have you. Thank you so much. Well, see you around, Aru. Oh, okay. oh sorry. Cool. Oh, no, that was cool. I just feel like feelings in my body for once, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm curious what title, and you don't have to share if you don't want to, but what title you thought of? Um, Senior in high school. Ooh, that's yeah. Fun. High school Kate, <laughs> full of anxiety and nerves, yeah. haunts me a little bit, and I'm trying to like be better friends with her. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. I've definitely like coming out of my first year and like taking some time to breathe has I been. I totally <laughs> forgot that you like. Oh my god, yeah. I know you're going to Harriet uh, deferred a year after graduating and is taking yeah. the off and it's going to yeah. year. Um, so I was a senior in high school last year, very recently, but oh. definitely like taking this time to as not as a student to kind of breathe and that, yeah, totally relatable. <laughs> that's so, oh, that's awesome. Oh my God. Um, well, I have some more fruits. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay. Um, this one is edible, not the outside, but the inside. Are you sure? Um, that's... Whoa, whoa, okay. Wait, wait, wait. The outside's edible? No, the outside's not okay. edible. Sorry. The inside is edible. Um, the inside can also turn into other things that are really yummy. Um, is that a it's, squash? Like, it's not a squash. Um, can we get some some guesses in the chat? 
I can give some more hints. Squash is a vegetable. Oh, I just forgot that. Okay. Um. Yeah. Chat, <laughs> please help me. Cacao. Ooh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Gosh Ooh. dang. It. No. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Ate this yesterday for the first time. There's like little seeds inside, and there's this white kind of jelly coating on it, and you suck on it, and it's really good. So wow, I'm really impressed. We're learning <laughs> well, so much today. Yes. yes. <laughs> the second one is super simple, but I have some fun facts about it. Banana? Yes. <laughs> um, another thing. So I found out this about a banana today, actually. Um, it grows, first of all, they grow in like a bunch, which I'm sure most of you have seen. And um, when they cut off the bunch, the, the plant only grows one bunch in its lifetime. So most times when people harvest bananas, they cut down the whole plant crazy second of all it's not a tree it's actually an herb and its closest relative is ginger which is crazy. so <laughs> i thought that was really interesting <laughs> that is really interesting i'm learning so much today oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a crazy oh. week <laughs> um this one's also pretty simple avocado yes <laughs> is avocado a fruit or a vegetable i think it's a fruit because it holds the seed it's like the fruiting body of the plant Chat, what do we think? Do you, would you count an avocado as a fruit or a vegetable? Uh, I also am of the opinion that a tomato is a vegetable and not a fruit. Mm -hmm. I know that it's technically not, but like I'm just, I just I have controversial produce opinions, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I think it's hard because I feel like the factual definition is different than what we usually categorize things right. at. So it's a it's a fruit or a vegetable, but for today. Right. It's one more, also fairly simple, but what do we think this is? Papaya? Yes! Oh, wow. Papaya! <laughs> awesome. Okay, that's enough for now. Um, <laughs> I'm going to introduce the next artist. Um, we have Josie uh, Weekant, um, and her piece is How to Romanticize Your Life. Um, and this piece is a short film about the culture of performative happiness. Um, Josie is a director and performer with a background in theater. She is attempting to learn how film works. Um, so she hopes that you enjoy her first foray into this medium of storytelling. Um, and you can follow Josie at Josie Wiegant. Let's um, give it up. We have another yeah. hashtag nerdy lang student. Can I get some <laughs> hashtag nerdy langs in the chat, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's give it up. I'm so excited to see this. And welcome, Josie. Do you ever find yourself fading into the background of life? Do you wake up in the mornings feeling like you may not be real? We're here to help. When you start to slip away into a monotonous routine, it's time to romanticize your life. That's right romanticize your life. Here are some simple practices to add to your routine that will make you the main character in your own story. Start by waking up early and refreshed. This should be easy for you. It is necessary to do this before the sun rises so that you can sit out on a rooftop to catch the early rays. Having a warm drink in hand helps to complete the look. Watch the sunrise, listen to the birds. Do not think of how you got here. Do not think of what is waiting for you when you return. This is your own time. This is self-care. Now you're ready to get dressed. Put on something practical, but make sure that it is appealing. You are a free spirit. When others see you, they will think only of how free you are. After all, you are only doing this for yourself. As light begins to stream through the window, choose one of your instruments and begin to play. You should know how to play. Haven't you been practicing? An important step in any routine is to connect with nature. No, not like that. Where did your appealing outfit go? You looked so much nicer in that. That's better. Spend some time outside practicing something you can use to feel better than others. A painting. 
physical evidence of all the time you have on your hands. Isn't it nice to have endless time to dedicate to living? To have something to show others. Proof that you live this way. Keep it up now. There are others watching. Aren't they envious? Don't they see how good you have it? And don't forget to smile. Keep smiling. People are watching. Don't they need to know how happy you are? Don't let that smile drop. Oh my god. That was so <laughs> sick. Oh my god. That was like I love that my existential, like <laughs> internalized imposter syndrome y like is mm -hmm. shit just manifest. That was so dope. Oh my god. That was incredible. Please so go follow like, Josie on all the social medias. <laughs> like please go do that. Um, <laughs> also the short film is on YouTube, so you can watch it there. Uh, and I'm like really excited and really proud to be able to call Josie one of my friends because like we go to school together and have classes together and I'm done and we are I I like to think we're friends. Um, so I'm really glad that that ah oh, that was so cool. I'm also, I'm so impressed that that's your first film. I don't know Josie if you're in like watching this right now, but that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was like so good. The editing and the sound effects were so crisp. Mm -hmm. It makes me um. I feel like this makes me think a lot of Insta of, of, like Instagram and how like you compose everything and I don't know that's just what like it brought my mind to right away. Yeah, please go sub to Josie's channel. Let's make it, it. Let's try and get ten subscribers at least minimum, and then the next goal can be a million. Okay, I think that's a good. I think that's a good. I think I think those are achievable stats. Uh, please go subscribe to Josie. I totally will after the show. <laughs> Well, my next person is also a hashtag nerdy lang human being, uh, which I'm very excited about. Uh, we have Addison uh, Sepulvelda. I do not know if I pronounced your name right, and I'm very sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, performing What's Hiding Under Those Shoes. You can follow Addison. Socials will be on the screen and in the chat. Please follow. Uh, Addison says... Uh, about this piece, I will be walking in, walking in with plain white shoes, sitting down, taking off my shoes, and then painting all of my toes different colors. When I am done painting my toes, I will put socks and shoes over the wet paint and walk away. Uh, Addison uh, is a currently a first year student at the new school. Uh, she grew up in Utah and generally spent most of her time in the mountains that, of, that Utah has to offer. Uh, she's passionate about the arts in general, especially art history, photography, and of course, performance art. Give it up. For Addison, everybody.
that was really cool. I was like, and when I thought of like painting toes, I thought like toenails. I didn't think that's it would be like, oh, yeah, but that's so <laughs> much better. Oh my God. Also, uh, love the the singular bird sock. I have like, I talk through this little pigeon <laughs> puppet sometimes. So I'm a big bird fan. Love the singular bird sock. I really love the, I, like, having the context for, for the, the end image of her shoes and, like, knowing, I, like, I feel like if I saw someone, I, I guess, the like, the name, what's hiding under those shoes, like, you know what's hiding under them, but if you just saw, like, yeah. a person walking down the street and then, like, I don't know, it's a cool little secret. I like right? it. <laughs> I was just like, like, trying, like thinking of like what it would feel like, you know, like like the yeah. toes, like on your toes. Oh, I was so. I sick. Think I would like it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it'd be like fun for like a second. I don't know. I have well, I'll have to like like ask Addison what it felt like. Please yeah. follow Addison. Uh, throw up her socials. Hell yeah, beautiful. Another another beautiful hashtag nerdy lang pal. Amazing, incredible. <laughs> Well, um, we have a couple more fruits ooh, before we introduce yes. our last act. I'll go. I'll try to go quickly. This one is deceiving. Persimmon. No. Tan, 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 tangerine. Close. It starts with the same letter. <laughs> you might not know this one. We might need. We might need some help from the chat. Who yeah, are some? Please fruit? help. Ooh, I don't I'm, know what a Persimmon orange is. I don't but either. Maybe I'm, that's a different name for this. When you said it was started with a T, I the first thing I thought it was turpentine, and that is not Ooh. edible, so I would hope not. No. Tangelo. <laughs> Ooh, uh Star Kid Comaris is tangible. Yes. That is correct, Star Kid. <laughs> okay, this one this one's pretty pretty Star Fruit? Yes. Okay. Nice. <laughs> um, so this one's a little bit not ripe. Usually they're red. <laughs> they're so small. Is and it a raspberry? No. Um, so this is a hard shell and typically you peel it off and eat what's inside. If that if that helps at all. Artichoke? No. It's sweet. It's like this like white kind of um kind of? no. Mm, okay. Help me <laughs> out. Help me out, chat. Ooh, gosh dang, it's Joe. Hey. hey. Yes, it is a lychee. I don't know whether it's pronounced lychee or lychee. There's some debate here. I but I, I call it a lychee and they're really good. So hopefully they'll be ripe soon. Ooh. Um, this one is also again might be a veg. I think it's a fruit. Now that I was gonna say lime, but now that you say that, I'm very worried. <laughs> it is. It is a lime. Oh, okay, cool. That is a fruit, right? It's sour. Fruit, yeah. fruit. It's okay. still, but it's like a citrus, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. yeah. Um, this is another one. Cucumber. Cucumber. No, it it's also deceiving. Ah. Uh... <laughs> Uh, help, help, help me, please, chat. I really don't know. Is it... Finger lime? No. I didn't know that was a finger lime. <laughs> what is a... What is a... Um, okay. Oop. Am I, am I frozen? Oh, no. Oh, okay. I just freeze? That's what I get. Oh, my gosh. Why am I freezing? Am I frozen? Oh, Kate's frozen. Okay. <laughs> oh no. This is Dang. this is a tiny avocado. You are correct. It's um, a baby. It's a baby. And then I have one more thing. This is a fruit, but it turns into something you drink. <laughs> um, drink. Okay, so they get roasted. This is the last one. Extra points to anyone who guesses these. Yeah, for Ooh, real. Yeah. They, do, they do look like cranberries, um, but it, it turns into something you drink. It's not sweet. Yes, coffee. Who is that? Um, I Sax. That's correct. <laughs> you get extra bonus points. Yes. Okay. So that's all the fruit I have today. Ah, that was a beautiful, fun, fun fruit game. And I'm excited. You Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm excited to eat all of it when we're done. Yes, as you should. <laughs> okay, I'm going to introduce our last act. Um, it is presented by Viviana Prado Nunez and Jeff Fan. And the piece is called um, When the Trees Fall Down. 
Um, it's a film that was created in the summer of 2020 as a thematic teaser for a play of the same name by Viviana, set two months after Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. The film is simultaneously a work of found poetry, object theater, and a reflection of the parallels between Hurricane Maria and the present day through the words of Puerto Ricans whose relatives died in the aftermath. Um, Viviana is an author, poet, and playwright born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, previous credits include winning the 2017 BERT Award for Caribbean Young Art Adult Literature um, and several others. And Jeff Fan um, is a filmmaker interested in how stories can function in coalition with political, economic, and technological forces to motivate action, nurture empathy, and envision collective futures, particularly in immigrant and global frameworks. Um, and we are going to, so this piece is our last piece, and we're going to say um, yeah. a little goodbye before. Yeah, this is after <laughs> after this piece, the show will end. There will be um, a recording, I think, for like two weeks on Twitch, mm -hmm. uh, and then it will be on the Brick YouTube channel, probably we'll put that up there. So this will continue to live forever yes. on the internet as things do, <laughs> but this is the last last piece of the night, last piece of the pilot episode, and we are so excited to have had you, so excited that, the, yeah. that you guys did, are here, and like, thank you to all of our amazing artists who did like such incredible work, and now, I think we can introduce Vivian. Yes. Hello. <laughs> I guessed so hard at the fruit, but guessed so badly. <laughs> I probably would not have known half of them before this. <laughs> I'm so mad that, that those were not cranberries. <laughs> yeah, they look like cranberries, so I apologize. <laughs> no, don't apologize. You got me. Um, right. So, hi, I am Viviana. Um, I don't know what else to say other than what I've already said. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't really, the film doesn't really have a title. I just call it And the Trees Fall Down because I made it, um, yeah, like, uh, you know, virtual fest. There was a virtual festival for a play that didn't happen. And um, we, we were meant to make teasers. And then I made a whole other different thing because I just had a uh, found poetry collection sitting around um, with all these fragments. Um, and I decided to make it into a film with a lot of, and I had never done object theater type things. So I just wanted to play with like symbolism and such. Um, yeah. And then I just collabed with my best friend and we fought a little bit. <laughs> um, and then we had a little film baby and here she is. <laughs> beautiful. We're glad it's to have beautiful. this little baby. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Please follow uh, Viviana and Jeff on their socials and let's roll the film. Woo. oficial, y como lo habíamos predicho, el Centro Nacional de Huracanes acaba de nombrar al Sistema 96L como María, por ahora Tormenta Tropical María, pero se tiene entendido que esta aumentará su fuerza en lo que va del fin de semana. Actualmente María, tiene vientos máximos sostenidos de 50 millas y para entrar en la categoría de Caribbean Islands that are just still recovering from Irma. María se convirtió este domingo en un huracán mientras se acerca al este de las Antillas Menores y Puerto Rico, que se encuentran en Buenas noches, esto es La Línea Paz, una programa de asistencia social. ¿Qué le impuso a llamar hoy? Buenas, 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 buenas noches. Esto es La Línea Paz, una programa de asiste, asistencia social. ¿Qué le, qué le, qué le impuso? Esto es la, esto, esto es, esto es la. 
la línea, la línea, la línea, la línea, esto es la línea, la línea, la línea pasa, 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 una, 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 una